just saying the word video strikes fear in the hearts of even the most courageous advisors and entrepreneurs. That's why I invited Laura Garfield, co-founder of Idea Decanter, to share her top 10 tips for making sure your video is crazy good. Idea Decanter is a video production company focused on helping advisors and entrepreneurs grow their business with video. And I am so excited for her to teach you this content because Idea Decanter is who I use to produce my own videos and who I recommend my clients work with too. So I know you're going to get a ton of value from this episode. And make sure you listen the whole way through because my favorite tip is tip number three. Don't miss it. It's something most people never think about. And if you miss it, your message may not be heard. In addition to co-founding Idea Decanter, Laura used to be a reporter on TV news. She's got a husband, two kids, and three pets, one of which is ironically a bunny named Bear. I love that. Let's jump in to today's episode. Hi, I'm Deirdre Van Nest, and you're listening to the Crazy Good Talks podcast. I created this podcast because I'm obsessed with helping financial professionals and entrepreneurs like you express yourself in a way that attracts and wins you more business. Plus, I want to help you make a huge impact on the lives of others. That's why each episode is packed with actionable strategies to help develop your speaking, storytelling, and content creation skills skills that allow you to effortlessly make emotional connections with your ideal clients. I'm so excited to take you on this journey because when you learn these skills, your influence and your impact will be limitless. Let's jump in to today's episode. So Laura, I think most advisors and entrepreneurs know that creating videos with original content is a must if they want to develop their thought leadership and attract more clients, but many of them shy away from it. So let's chat for just a couple of minutes about why that is, and then we'll dive into your 10 tips for creating crazy good videos. What are your thoughts on this? Who doesn't love a good top 10, right? I know. I love (laughs) a top 10. Exactly. You know, Deirdre, I think one of the things that trips people up the most is what do I say? Mm. they hear they need video, they know they need video. And then what are they going to say in their videos? I always recommend starting with the end in mind. So if you're tripped up about what the messaging needs to be, ask yourself, what are you trying to accomplish with this video Yes, and work backwards? Absolutely. I think one of the other things that I hear a lot is I don't like how I look. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, and I can relate I, to that. I'm not a big fan of myself on video. I don't know how you feel about yourself on video. Yeah, I don't love it either. Um, I just had a guy ask me this morning, can I remove the wrinkles and add in some hair? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's a filter out there for that, but what we Ooh. believe is <laughs> can you, you can you give us that app? Give us that app. <laughs> <laughs> that you bring your authentic self to your videos. I mean, people don't want a movie star. They want to hear what you have to say. And so you just kind of have to get over that. I'm not perfect because none of us are. I agree. And that's one of the things I've had to really just give up. Um, I mean, Mm -hmm. you met me when I started doing videos and remember I was like, oh my gosh, this is awful (laughs) and painful. And it's not like I'm in love now, but I don't dislike it any longer. And I'm not scared of it any longer. I typically don't love how I look, but I'm like, okay, I'm doing good things in the world and I'm making an impact. That's more important to me than me thinking I look pretty or whatever on the video. Does that make sense? And I think for anyone listening to this, they their ears should perk up when they hear you telling that story because you are a masterful presenter. You step on stage in front of hundreds of people very frequently. And even you have those same thoughts when you step in front of the lens. So yeah, nobody's alone when it comes to that. No. Okay. So you just have to, Laura and I are going to give you some tough love. You got to get over it. It's just, if you haven't gotten over it yet, now is the time because not only, not only are you holding yourself back, you are not making the impact on Mm -hmm. the lives of the people you're meant to serve. If you're holding back in this way, would you agree, Laura? 
Let it go. Yes. Let it go. Okay. Let's get into your top 10 list for crazy good videos, starting with number 10. (laughs) Tell a story. Oh, I love that one. I mean, maybe we should take that and put it as number one. I know. know. We'll say these are not in any particular order, (laughs) right? These are not necessarily in order of importance. They're just all important. Okay. Tell us more about tell a story. Stories are what connect us. Stories are what make you real. And stories are what begin to build trust. So you should include stories in your video. And I have a great example. We work with a an advisor named Peter Tedstrom, who's in Colorado. And he did a prepare to live a long life story. Mm. And he told the story about his hero in his life, his grandfather, who lived to be 104. Wow. Yikes. I mean, that is a long life. And when you think about retirement planning, you're usually not doing the calculations to get you to hundred and true, true. Like people are usually maybe in their nineties, but yeah. not necessarily. My grandma's going to be 103 in a month and a half. Amazing. So I better Happy plan to live. That, yeah. Thank <laughs> you. I better plan to live that long life too. Well, as an advisor for Peter, you know, you hear that story and then you realize this guy has probably started to look at retirement planning a little bit differently because of his personal story. Yeah. And he really has, and he brings that to his clients and it's a powerful way to deliver that kind of message. Well, not only that, Laura, but if I'm listening, if someone, if I clicked on a video, let's say it's an advisor and they say, okay, plan because you might live above 90 people are living longer today. You're like, okay, I know that, but it doesn't hit me emotionally. It doesn't really like I'm probably not going to do anything, but as soon as he starts talking about, okay, there's this real life person happens to be my grandpa who's lived this long. And this is what's this. And this is that all of a sudden you're like, oh, like this is real stories, make things real. And they hit us at a visceral level so that we remember them and actually are inspired to take action. And sometimes the most powerful part of making that story memorable is dropping in some details. And one of the things I remember from Peter's story is he talked about the price of eggs back when his grandpa was a kid. I love that. <laughs> I mean, lately with inflation at the grocery store, things have changed a lot, but oh my things gosh. have definitely changed a lot. Oh yeah. Since Peter's grandpa's childhood. I bet. Okay, great. Number nine. You are going to love this one, Deirdre, because it is use the you. Ah, and yes. <laughs> use the you. <laughs> If we could shout it from the rooftop, Mm -hmm. you know, video is a really powerful one to many communication tool because you can record it once and many people can watch it on demand, but really at its heart, video is one-on-one because it's you talking to one person on the other end of that internet connection. So the way to connect with them and to make them feel seen is to use the you don't speak in third party. Absolutely. And I was one of the things we do for our advisors and entrepreneurs is we will critique presentations or videos that they're delivering educational pieces on. And so I was critiquing a 20 minute, 20 minute video that two advisors did. And one of my comments multiple times was they'd say things like, so everybody, so all of you. And I said, okay, listen, you have to remember even if it's a couple sitting next to each other on a couch, they're still thinking themselves as a you. And that couple is a you right? But most likely it's one person on their phone or on their iPad, Mm -hmm. on the, you know, on a plane, on a train, wherever, sitting somewhere in their car, waiting for their kids and they're, and it's just one person. And so if you say everybody, they're looking around like, well, who are they talking to? It's, you want to be talking to that one individual human being. And this is our process. If you're working off of a script for your video, Our process is just simply read through that script when you're done and look for any kind of third party references and just retweak that. Exactly. Yeah. Put you in there and then make sure the sentence works with it. Yeah. One of the things that I teach when we're talking about presenting from the stage that is that this part is very similar to video with Mm -hmm. the you is if you can pass, we call it the hallway test. If you can pass one person in the hallway and that phrase sounds normal to them, use it. But if you pass someone in the hallway and they're looking around going, who else are they talking to? Who else is in this hallway? There's no everybody. Then you need to change it. There are situations when you can't replace everything with you in a video. I would agree. For example, my clients, 
you can't scratch that out and put in you because then you're actually like already converting a prospect to a yes. client yes. and it gets confusing and the viewers like, I don't already work with you, but I would say in 90% of the cases, I would agree. Converted. I would agree. Okay, great. So number eight, so 10 is, is tell a story. Nine is be very you focused. What is number eight? Take a sniper approach Ooh. to content. I think, I don't know that this is going to be about editing. And our last episode was about killing your darlings, which was all about being an editor. And I always say, be a ruthless editor. Is this what this is about? A sniper approach? <laughs> Yeah. Isn't that there a Stephen King thing about killing your darling? You know, it's been attributed to a lot of different people, Mark Twain, uh, Stephen King. I don't know if anyone knows. So I just say in writing circles, this is what they say. So I'm going to shock you, shock and awe, Deirdre. It's hard to shock you, but that's not what this one's about. (gasps) Really? Okay. I'm excited. What is this one? I call the shotgun approach to messaging messaging that could apply to anyone. Oh, okay. Your audience could be any prospective client. Yeah. Sniper approach is a specific kind of person with a specific kind of problem. Oh, I love that. That's great. So this tends to be the kind of content that gets more engagement. Okay. Because it gets to the heart of a specific problem that people are having. A great example is an advisor we're working with who is in Canada and he has a business that specializes in working with Americans who are living in Canada. Ah, interesting. I love that. What kind of financial problems they have. Yeah. And a sniper approach to his content would be talking about what happens when you have an IRA in the U.S. and you're living in Canada. And it turns out there's a $10,000 consequence each year Ooh. to not knowing that answer. Okay. And that's sniper content. I love that. So what would be the opposite of sniper content in that scenario? Uh, so shotgun content. Yeah. What would that um, look like? How do you know if you're ready to retire? Okay. It's a much broader scope. It could be anybody. Right. Okay. That's great. I love your sniper content. I think that's beautiful. Okay, great. So what is number seven? This one you will relate with also have a clear call to action. Well, give the viewer (laughs) an obvious (laughs) next step. If they've watched the video, they hung in there with you till the end of your messaging. They really do want to know what you want them to do next. So don't hesitate to tell them. I find a lot of people, particularly advisors, are very hesitant to do this next step and be very directive Mm -hmm. on what's happening next. But it is amazing. I see this with live audiences too all the time. If you don't give people a next step, even if they love you, they kind of don't do anything. It's kind of weird. You would just think, well, they really like me. They'll know that they should go to my website or whatever. People don't. And so you do have to be clear. You really have personal experience in what this looks like too. Um, And I think you're a great example. We created some videos with you and we recorded different calls to action on the end so that you could use them in different ways. Do you remember what the different platforms you were posting on? Yeah. So one of them would be if it's on my website, then there's a start a conversation button and they would be able to click the start a conversation button. If I use it anywhere other than my website, then we have an email address connect at crazygoodtalks.com and we ask them to email the email address. So you might be thinking, well, if somebody sees this video on my website and the button is right below the video, they're going to take the logical leap. And yes, some people will, but why not encourage them to do it? So number six. Keep it short. Mm, This is a big one. (laughs) I mean, it's hard. And kind of back to your idea of kill your darling. Yes. It is the editing phase of your messaging. And really our rule of thumb is three minutes or less. Yep. Two minutes is even better if you can get it closer to one minute. Even the best, right? (laughs) Yes. Your audience just doesn't have a long attention span anymore. So really editing it down. A good rule of thumb that we use is 
about 150 words equals a minute in standard cadence. Now, if you're from the South, then you have a drawl. It might take longer. You know, if you're from New York and you talk really fast, then that changes it too. But So yeah, so I just wrote, well, someone on my team actually wrote a short story for a client and I was editing it and we like to keep them at 150 words because that's usually 60 seconds and it was 212 words. So I thought, well, let me read it and let let me see, let me see if this really is 60 seconds. And I got my 212 done in like 62 seconds, (laughs) but that might be the New Yorker in me. So it's a good gauge, right? The 150 words is kind of like a good gauge. And then everyone has to sort of figure out their speech cadence. I would imagine. Yeah, and I would warn against trying to speed it up to fit more into a yes. shorter amount of time because what happens is sometimes when you speed up your delivery, then it adds some anxiety to the messaging. Yeah. Like, why is it going so fast? Why is there so much energy here? And if that doesn't match with the story, then you know you're getting that dissonance. For sure. And then you, you know, pausing is how you evoke emotion. And so if you, if you, if you try to cram too much in and don't give yourself those places to pause, then you also lose something there. You'll lose the connection. Yeah. Okay, great. So now let's go down to number five, but let me do a little recap here. Okay. So 10 was tell a story. Nine is use the word you don't use words like everybody, anybody, how many of you, Eight is take the sniper approach to your content. Seven, have a clear call to action. Six, keep it short. Let's go to five. Well, you'll notice that the first five were all about messaging. Mm. Now your top five are going to be all about actually producing the video. And the first is take time to light. (sighs) It really does make a difference. I know it's such a, I feel like particularly since the pandemic, you need like a PhD in lighting. <laughs> it was like the bane of my existence for the first year of the pandemic, the whole lighting. Thing. And it's really hard. And what did you do? You invested some money in some decent lights, right? I did. And I called you and I had you walk around my <laughs> office with me on a phone and I would practice my lights and right. I mean, I needed expert help. This not, it's not easy. It is not easy, but I think a simple way to overcome many lighting obstacles is simply to turn off your overhead lights Mm. because they are not flattering. I have a canned light right over my desk and I actually took out the light bulb because I didn't want to battle with it anymore. Yeah. But what overhead lighting does in your office or your home, wherever you're shooting, is it starts to cast dark circles under you. And it's just never flattering. The most flattering light you can stumble into comes through your window. And so if you can position yourself with a background you're happy with, with some natural light falling on you, that can be really flattering. And then if you fill in with some artificial light, then I think you get the best result. Absolutely. Okay, great. What's number four? Get a good mic. And I think anybody in the podcasting world can attest to this, right? Yeah. For us, we use the Rode SmartLav. It's a clip-on mic that you can plug into an iPhone with a connector. Uh, You know, in the podcasting world, there's all kinds of great external mics. But what we found after testing probably 20 versions of clip-on mics is that you get what you pay for. And so you can go out and get yourself a 20 or $30 mic, but really it is worth investing in a smart love, which is a little, what is that? It's closer to a hundred kind of fluctuates, but it's worth it. But it's worth Mm -hmm. it. What's the, what's the one again that it's the road. I always say it wrong. Is it road? You said Uh or roadie? It's road R O D E smart love. Okay. So we could put that in the show notes so that people can, can access that. Okay. Awesome. And then any sound tips? Is there anything that you can think of would be something people would want to know? Well, when you're recording video, you definitely have to think about what other noise um, is happening in the background. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, beyond the clear, like stop the dinging from your computer, make sure you put your phone on silent, all of that. Just make sure that there's not a coworker who's walking down the hall with a really loud voice on a phone call 
in the middle of your shoot. So just try to control yeah. the ambient noise as much as possible. So like fire alarms going off and yeah. stuff, probably not. Yeah. I feel I've like I might've been you. on a Zoom no, call with you once. Three when times. A, when a yeah, fire alarm. Three went. times. <laughs> three times that happened. Yeah, that was lovely. <laughs> you rolled with it. <laughs> you definitely were on a call with me when that happened. Okay. I think this next one, number three is super interesting. And one that I think most people probably don't think of. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so they miss it. So what's number three? So you think about video, you think, well, the power of it is I'm delivering this message with my voice, but you need to add captions. Yeah. Say more about that. This stat is startling, but these days close to 85% of content is consumed online without people ever clicking on the audio. Are you kidding me? Nope. So what they are getting okay. is your facial expressions okay, wow. and your gestures, but what they're not getting is the tone of your voice. What? So do you think it's because, okay, so like last night I'm in bed and I got my iPad and I'm like scrolling through stuff. There's a couple of videos I want to watch, but Peter's asleep next to me. So I don't want to wake him up and I don't have, you know, my AirPods. Is that why like people are in situations yeah. where they can't have sound? Is yeah. that Yep, yep. I can't think of any other reason why. Yesterday I was sitting in a waiting room with my dad at a doctor's appointment looking at things online. And yeah, you want to make sure that your message can get through whether or not they're listening to you, which just means adding captions. So there's a couple of options. When we create videos, we burn the captions in just to kind okay. of dummy proof it. Yep. But You can also upload a separate file with captions so they can be turned on and off. They can disappear from your video or if the viewer wants captions, they can click them on. Or you can rely on AI auto generated captions. So if you load a video up to YouTube without captions, it will automatically generate them. The thing you need to remember though is AI is only as good as it is. Right, right. Take the time to review how it got translated and make sure that you edit anything that's wrong. So for YouTube, I'm just thinking, are you talking about the cat, the cat, the, what I, I've experienced is that it's on the side of the video, mm-hmm. or is there actually a feature in YouTube where it's like going with on the video, like it is when you produce the videos? Yeah, it can, it oh. can appear on the lower third of the okay. video and it can definitely have a lot of mistakes in it that would not match your brand. Okay. And then you, but you can fix those. You can, if you go into your creator settings on YouTube, you can edit those. What about Vimeo? Do you know if Vimeo has that same capability? I don't. And that's a great question. I bet it's auto-generating captions as well. Okay. That's something I'd like to look into. I mean, I do most of my videos with you, like my, you know, evergreen ones, Mm -hmm. but you know, I do things here and there where I'm really not doing that. Yeah. And that would be Yeah. Okay. That's a, that is, that is a startling statistic. It's crazy, but I, but I can, but I can see, you know, we're all busy and we're trying to fit these videos into everything else we're doing. Yes. Although if you checked out, if you checked out my teenagers, I think they're listening to all their videos. They would not be the target audience here though. They would not be our target audience. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's very true. Uh, Mine as well. This yesterday morning, Noah comes downstairs and I'm like, Hey bud. And I get no answer. And I'm like, Hey, bud, and I get no answer. And then he comes past me, the AirPods are in his ears. And I say something, he's like, what, what? And I'm like, oh gosh, <laughs> I'll save my really perky energy for my husband. <laughs> this is being wasted on you, right? Oh my gosh. Okay. Number two, what is number two? I'm chuckling because I'm looking at it and I am, I can relate to it. And this is my least favorite place in the world to be probably. <laughs> what is number two? The rabbit hole. <laughs> Don't get lost in the rabbit hole of editing. Oh, oh. I, I'm so often, not <laughs> even just with video, but with content, mm-hmm. I can go down that road and I'm in like Alice in Wonderland. I'm off. Yeah. And it's, it's a whole nother layer and another deeper labyrinth when you're talking about video editing, because it's not just making decisions. It's the tech layer. And Editing is not easy. I mean, just to put it bluntly, I talk to advisors all the time who have tried and they call me after spending three nonstop days 
in some editing program trying to accomplish what they were trying to do. And they finally resurface and say, what am I doing? Help me now. Okay. We have to stop here for a minute. So this is for, this is for, this is for you. If you're an advisor, you're an entrepreneur listening, think about for a moment what your time is worth. I want you to like, I want you to really think about how much per hour, like you might already know that maybe you've done this exercise. If you haven't done this exercise, you should, but just maybe take a ballpark estimate uh, on how much you earn per hour. And if I think of someone, an advisor taking three days, which I 100% believe happened, that's 24 hours. We'll just say you have an eight hour working day. How much money is that? I don't know. What, you got you to calculate. Let's just say they're $500 an hour. What is that? 24 times 500 is like $1,200, $12,000. I think it's like $12,000. Here, do that. Yeah, I don't have my phone or anything because I didn't want it to, you know, $12,000. Twelve. They spent $12,000. Thousand dollars editing the video, and they didn't even get a finished video. <laughs> they didn't get a finished product. <laughs> so right now, if you are spending time doing anything in the tech realm that you are not skilled or you don't love to do, stop it. Just stop it and hire it out. I'm, hire it out. I think anybody running a business this should resonate with. I mean. It happens to me all the time. I look oh, yeah. at the things I spend my hours on during the day, and I know that this isn't fulfilling my greatest calling, my greatest use of my talents. And yes, I try to reorganize that. I'm constantly trying to do an overhaul on what needs to stay with me and what doesn't. Video editing for a financial advisor doesn't need to stay with you. <laughs> no, video editing for 99% of the world. <laughs> does not need to stay with you. I mean, it just, it just doesn't. Right. And so, you know, what, what would take someone 24 hours and $12,000 later for no result could take your team probably an hour, Mm -hmm. two hours, even if it's eight hours, it's still, it's still so much less expensive and you get a great result. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. And let's go to the number one. Again, this is not, these are not in order, but we're going to go to the number one and final tip for making crazy good videos. What is it? I would tattoo this one on your arm, have a plan and stick to it. There are so many cases where I have worked with advisors who have created all this content and totally dropped the ball on pushing Mm. it out. I consider creating good video like a football game. Oh, okay. And really the way we work with clients on the pre-production, the production and the post-production to get to that finished compliance approved video, that's like the first three quarters. And who would play only the first three quarters of a football game? Mm, Good point. You got to finish the game. And that is the post and promote piece. So make sure you have a strategy in place for what happens to the video when it gets completed. We work with one of our partners, Kelly Collective, who I know is a friend of yours, too, Deirdre, and she takes many of our clients' videos and does the push for them. Actually yes. does the functionality of posting the video, running the ca- campaigns, building the emails, all of it. All of it. And if you don't have someone on your team who you can designate as sort of head of video who will take on these roles. It is definitely something you should consider outsourcing. No, I I absolutely agree. And in fact, I just left Callie a message this morning about some videos that I want to push out there, but, and what was she episode? Oh, I don't know what episode she was, maybe episode 24, I think, but we will, we'll put that in the show notes too. She, uh, we did an episode on how to get more eyes on your videos. So that's another area where I think people who are bright people, because you're a bright person, you're thinking, well, I could do this. I should be able to figure this out. And if you actually don't have the expertise, it's not about being smart or bright or talented. If you don't have the expertise in these areas, you're, you're going down that rabbit hole. You're wasting your time and you're not going to get the kind of results you want. So it really does behoove you to outsource it or, 
or, or have someone on your team if you get to a place where you're producing so much. So let's, what I'd like to do next is I would like to talk for a couple of minutes about how you work with clients because you have this really cool service called Idea Kit that I think is, it's really cutting edge and I want people to know about it. But first, can you do a rundown of the top 10 for us just so we have it all in one place? Starting with 10. Number 10, tell a story. Number nine, use the you. Number eight, sniper content. Number seven, have a clear call to action. And number six, keep it short. Then we get into the actual production of the video. Number five, take time to light. Number four, get yourself a mic. Number three, add captions to your video. Number two, that rabbit hole of editing, don't go down it. And number one, make sure you have a plan to post and promote and stick to it. Love it. Thank you so much, Laura. These are such great tips. Let's talk about Idea Kit. Tell us about it. Idea Kit is a remote video solution that, you know, a lot of people think, mm, maybe this is sort of like DIY and you're editing my videos. Not at all. It is a start to finish production experience where we help you lay out, map a content plan up front, take you all the way through prepping for your shoot, getting you confident on camera. And then on your actual record session, you will get into an app and you'll be there with a kit coach. It's a remote studio. So our coach can see you and you can see her. And she will be coaching you through everything, making sure the background's right, the lighting's right, doing the mic check. And then we turn the screen of your phone into a teleprompter so you can just follow along the script. I mean, really, when you clip on the mic, you are the talent. And the best part of the part that happens in that record session probably is that you are getting live performance coaching. So some real-time feedback on things you might want to go back and re-record, like make sure you smile. Deirdre, you mentioned all of the important pausing, like, let's go back and do this one again, slow it down, insert a pause. Yeah, I love, oh, sorry, go ahead. I want to talk, I want to talk about my experience in a minute, but what were you going to say? Well, I was just going to say when your call is over, we pull the clips into the cloud. So you don't even have to worry about the file transfer and all of the editing is on us. No rabbit hole <laughs> at all. And that's, no rabbit hole. that's how Idea Kit works. I love it. What, what I think is so freeing about this, and I've done... I, I I don't know. I can't even count how many videos and projects I've done with mm -hmm. you over Idea Kit. Is you get professional production quality, both from the shoot and the editing, and you don't have to be in the same city as me. We used to travel around the country. We would fly to you, rack up our frequent flyer miles, you know, haul in fifty thousand dollars worth of gear. Yep. And when we launched Idea Kit in twenty nineteen, my co founder Sharon and I were both very skeptical. Could we really replicate what we were yeah, doing on site with an iPhone? The cameras are great on the phones these days. And is it a hundred percent as great as what we could do on site? Probably not, but the budget is so much smaller that it's yeah. probably worth the trade-off. It's probably worth it. And I think people looking at these videos wouldn't be like, oh, I could tell. Like, I don't think anyone, my videos I think are so well done. And so if you want to see what some of these look like, go to my website, crazygoodtalks.com. Every video that's on there was done through Idea Kit and you'll get an idea for quality. So I want to encourage you, if you're you know, listening today to reach out, Laura will tell you in a minute how to reach out to her, but if you're going to do video, particularly, you know, there's some videos that you can just do organic, right? On your own, on your phone, on your computer. But I know Laura likes to say, you like to say those evergreen ones, they're going to live on your website. They're, they're important messages. They're going to live somewhere. Those really should be professionally done. And so if you want to do that with people who are just the best and such artists, particularly at editing and the B-roll, and you don't want to break the bank. Idea Kit is just a fabulous, fabulous service. And you work mostly in the financial services industry. And I love that because you are an expert there. You're an expert in compliance. So we have a lot of shared clients, which I so appreciate, but you also work with entrepreneurs as well, like me, people like me. We do correct? because video is yeah. powerful in either of those industries. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How can people find you? IdeaDecanter.com, decanter with an ER, 
And you can check out many samples of remote videos all over our website. If you're interested in finding out more, there's a schedule a call button at the top. Uh, we'd love to tell you more about it. All right. Sounds great. Thanks so much for being here, Laura. It's always amazing to be with you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to the Crazy Good Talks podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered in this podcast represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Accelerated Performance, LLC. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only.